Good morning. The Judiciary Committee will come to order, and without objection, the chair is authorized to declare a recess at any time. Pursuant to notice, I now call up H.R. 1872 for purposes of markup and move that the committee report the bill favorably to the House. The clerk will report the bill. H.R. 1872. <coughs> Promote access for United States officials, journalists, and other citizens to Tibetan areas of the People's Republic of China and for other purposes. Without objection, the bill will be considered as read and open for amendment at any point, and the amendment in the nature of a substitute, which members have before them, will be considered as read, considered as the original text for purposes of amendment, and open for amendment at any point. And I'll begin by recognizing myself for an opening statement. H.R. 1872, the Reciprocal Access to Tibet Act of 2017, addresses an issue of long-standing and increasing concern regarding China's treatment of Tibetans living in the Tibetan Autonomous Region and other Tibetan areas controlled by China. In 1950, the Chinese People's Liberation Army went into Tibet in order to establish control over the region. In the years since then, as noted by the U.S. Department of State, the Chinese government has imposed severe restrictions on Tibetans' ability to exercise their human rights and fundamental freedoms. Such restrictions occur with regard to religious practices, freedom to travel, freedom to practice cultural and language preferences, and other aspects of life. In addition, the Chinese government routinely engages in human rights abuses, such as extrajudicial killings, torture, and arbitrary arrests. In fact, the Chinese government's actions are so severe that in recent years, over 150 Tibetans have self-immolated in a last-ditch effort to get the rest of the world to focus on the problem. In order to prevent documentation of the religious freedom restrictions and other human rights abuses to the outside world, the government of China has severely limited access by foreign nationals to the Tibetan regions. Such limitations prevent access to U.S. officials seeking diplomatic and consular access, journalists, human rights workers, and even tourists. When rare access is granted, activities are closely monitored by the PRC, and information disseminated is restricted. Matteo Makachi, the president of the International Campaign for Tibet, has stated that, quote, the Chinese leadership is seeking to enforce complete isolation on Tibet often described as being worse than in North Korea, where at least some foreign media are based. Independent international observers are shut out of Tibet and allowed to visit only under strictly controlled circumstances, while numerous delegations of party officials face no obstacles in traveling to Western democracies to spread their propaganda. In fact, Travel by Chinese nationals, including those with direct and substantial involvement in the formulation of policies to restrict access to Tibet, is routinely allowed by governments all over the world, including the United States. During fiscal year 2017, for instance, nearly 1.5 million tourist visas were issued by the United States to Chinese nationals. And those visas are valid for 10 years, during which the Chinese nationals can visit the U.S. multiple times. During that same period, the United States issued nearly 4,500 diplomatic visas to Chinese officials. H.R. 1872 prohibits an individual who is substantially involved in the formulation or execution of policies related to access for foreigners to Tibetan areas from being granted a U.S. visa if the Secretary determines that, one, the requirement for specific sp official permission for foreigners to enter the Tibetan Autonomous Region remains in effect, or two, such requirement has been replaced by a regulation that has similar effect and requires foreign travelers to gain a level of permission to enter the Tibet Autonomous Region that is not required for travel to other provinces in China, and three, restrictions on travel by officials, journalists, and citizens of the United States to areas designated as Tibetan Autonomous in the provinces of Sichuan, Xinhai, Yunnan, and Gansu of China are greater than any restrictions on travel by such officials and citizens to areas in such provinces that are not so designated. Any visa currently held by such individuals will be revoked under the bill. The bill then requires the State Department to report <coughs> annually to the House and Senate Judiciary Committees, as well as the House Foreign Affairs Committee and the Senate Foreign Relations Committee on the number of actions taken regarding visas pursuant to the legislation.
According to the State Department, in recent years there have been very small inroads made with regard to access to the Tibetan areas. And while some have expressed the concern that moving this bill could make the Chinese government roll back some of those inroads, moving this bill is the right thing to do. It is time that Congress take a stand with regard to access by foreign nationals to the Tibetan regions. I want to thank Congressman McGovern for his work on this issue, and I urge my colleagues to support the bill. It's now my pleasure to recognize the ranking member of the committee, the gentleman from New York, Mr. Nadler, for his opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. H.R. 1872, the Reciprocal Access to Tibet Act of 2017, seeks to end restrictions imposed by the Chinese government that have prevented American journalists, human rights monitors, diplomats, and tourists from accessing Tibetan areas of the People's Republic of China. This bipartisan legislation accomplishes this goal by denying U.S. visas to Chinese government officials who have created or implemented restrictions on travel by U.S. citizens to Tibet and by requiring annual reporting to House and Senate committees on such restrictions. Increased access for U.S. diplomats, journalists, and tourists to Tibet will shed light on the gross human rights violations perpetrated by China against the Tibetan people. For Tibetans, restricted access to the region leaves them in virtual isolation from the rest of the world, while also precluding international witnesses to the Chinese government's continuous violations of the Tibetans' human rights. The State Department and many independent international human rights organizations have raised concerns about arbitrary arrest and imprisonment, torture and ill treatment, heightened surveillance, and religious and cultural restrictions in Tibet. Preventing diplomats, journalists, and tourists from traveling to Tibet makes it impossible to assess the true scope of these abuses. H.R. 1872 is an important step in pushing back against these restrictive policies. Increased access of U.S. officials and diplomats to Tibet will also help ensure the safety of U.S. citizens in that region. For example, restricted access has made it very difficult for American consular officials to provide emergency assistance to Americans in Tibet. After an October 2013 bus crash in Tibet left three Americans dead and many others injured, U.S. consular officers faced a prolonged delay in obtaining permission to travel to the region, which severely hindered their ability to serve American citizens in distress. They face similar challenges in providing emergency assistance following a 2015 earthquake that trapped dozens of U.S. citizens in Tibet. This bill will help overcome those obstacles. Mr. Chairman, I want to thank you for bringing this important bipartisan legislation before the committee today. As you are aware, there's widespread support for this bill on both sides of the aisle in this committee as well as in the Foreign Affairs Committee. The version of the bill that the committee is considering today reflects refinements negotiated between the majority and minority staff of both committees, which are responsive to comments provided by the State Department. I strongly support this bill, and I hope that given its broad bipartisan support, it will be brought to the floor when we return from the August recess. I would now like to yield the balance of my time to Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal, who is a steadfast advocate for Tibetan human rights and a champion of this important legislation. Thank you, uh, Mr. Nadler, for your incredible leadership on this issue and for yielding time to me. And Chairman Goodlatte, I want to thank you for your strong statement and for your work in getting this bill to a markup. I also want to thank Mr. McGovern for his incredible dedication to this issue, and I had the opportunity to go on a trip with Mr. Sensenbrenner to Dharamsala last year, um, and he has been an outspoken champion of Tibetan human rights, and it's so gratifying to see the incredible bipartisan support in this committee and beyond uh, on this issue. The Reciprocal Access to Tibet Act is about fairness, human rights, and careful U.S. diplomacy at its core. For too long, China has restricted access to Tibet, prevented U.S. diplomats and journalists from observing human rights abuses in Tibet, and preventing Tibetan Americans from visiting their home country. A Washington Post journalist said that in 2016 that Tibet is, quote, harder to visit as a journalist than North Korea. This bill seeks to reset the table. It is premised on the idea that reciprocity forms the basis of diplomatic law and practice of mutual exchanges between the countries. And it simply requires if Chinese officials, journalists, and other citizens are able to travel freely in the United States, then it's only fair that their American counterparts are able to do the same. Mr. Chairman, as I mentioned, I had the great honor of meeting with His Holiness last year, and it was a deeply moving meeting with him, the Tibetan government in exile, and the 10,000 plus people that came to a public celebration event while we were there. His Holiness is a man of peace and tremendous integrity, and he's laid out a five-year roadmap for negotiations with China, and he's willing to work with China to find a way forward. But for any peace plan to get a footing, it is absolutely essential that we work closely with our global partners to push, push this issue 
at this time, because it is widely believed that upon His Holiness's eventual death, a period of greater instability is likely to ensue, making the human rights issues and possible solutions even more intractable. So the timing of this markup and hopefully successful conclusion of this hearing and then uh, moving to the floor expeditiously is essential. There are many Tibetan Americans throughout the United States whose family members still reside within Tibet, and they are watching closely for signs that the United States is willing to help, willing to allow them to return to visit their families, and hoping fervently for a solution to the pain and suffering in Tibet and with the diaspora that has been experienced by generations. This bill is about careful U.S. leadership, and I look forward uh, to working with you, Mr. Chairman, and with our ranking member to get this bill to the floor, and I thank you uh, very much for yielding time, Mr. Nadler. Thank you, and I, I now yield back. Mr. Chairman. Uh, for purpose, the gentleman from Ohio seek recognition. Move strike, last word. Gentleman's recognized five Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, and thank you for bringing uh, this up today and holding this markup. Uh, I also want to thank Mr. McGovern and Mr. Holtgren for their work on this legislation, which I'm a co-sponsor of. Uh, in addition to my service on this committee, I also served for two decades on the uh, Foreign Affairs Committee and have chaired the uh, Middle East Committee as well as the Asia and, and uh, uh, the Asia and Pacific uh, uh, subcommittee as well. And over in Foreign Affairs, we see China as seeking to undermine uh, rules-based international order virtually every day, uh, whether it's intellectual property rights, forced technology transfers, cybersecurity, trade, or the Made in China 2025 plan, it's clear that Beijing continues to enjoy the blessings of peace and stability while routinely flouting uh, the rules to gain a competitive edge. Uh, this is a direct threat to our national security and is also deeply unfair. Furthermore, China seeks a world that revolves around China, where uh, one where the rules are full of double standards designed to favor Chinese interests. One such double standard is Tibet. While free Western societies allow Chinese officials and journalists to come here routinely, uh, China tightly restricts access to Tibet, not only for Western journalists and human rights activists, but also for Western officials and even members of the Tibetan diaspora uh, merely seeking to visit their ancestral homeland. China also oppresses the Tibetan people, <coughs> interfering in their religion by seeking to appoint the next Dalai Lama forcing the current Dalai Lama and Tibetan government into exile and restricting Tibetans' freedom of movement, both inside Tibet and in international travel. That's why today's legislation is so important. It lays out criteria to draw up a list of Chinese officials and prohibits these officials from obtaining a U.S. visa until we have similar access to Tibet. Until we push back against Beijing's double standards, they will continue to bully us and their neighbors uh, and H.R. 1872 pushes back. I would urge my colleagues to support this legislation, and I thank the chairman uh, for allowing me to speak, and I yield back. Mr. Chairman. Your thanks, gentlemen. For what purpose does the gentleman from California seek recognition? Just write the last word. The gentleman was recognized for five minutes. You know, many of our uh, temporary immigration programs are founded on the concept of reciprocity. In other words, we'll offer your citizens what you offer to our citizens. We saw an example of this on the House floor on Monday with the passage of the Kiwi Act, that bill provides temporary E-1 or E-2 visas to New Zealanders seeking to conduct trade with or to invest in the United States. But those provisions uh, become operative if uh, New Zealand offers commensurate benefits uh, to us. The same is true with tourist visas, cultural exchange visas, many other visa programs. And in all of these programs, the underlying concept is the same. We'll do for you what you do for us. This bill simply reinforces the concept of reciprocity in our immigration system with respect to China. The Chinese government, as has been mentioned, has imposed restrictions that prevent the travel of Americans, including <clears throat> diplomats, officials, journalists, human rights monitors, and tourists uh, Tibetan, to Tibetan areas within China, but we don't pose uh, such restrictions on travel by Chinese citizens to the U.S. Now, based on the concept of reciprocity, we'd be within our rights to deny entry to millions of Chinese citizens or to limit their act access to various parts of our country. But this bill takes a much more measured approach, and I agree with that. Rather than disadvantaging millions of Chinese citizens who have nothing to do with the Tibet travel restrictions, 
The bill focuses on the Chinese government officials who created or executed them. This bill would deny visas to such officials while these uh, Chinese travel restrictions remain in effect. Of course, waiver authority is provided to comply with our UN headquarters obligations and when necessary to address uh, critical issues that's in our national interest. And the State Department, of course, is required to provide annual reporting to Congress on these restrictions. Uh, these are fair, measured responses uh, to Chinese policies affecting our citizens. And I also believe they're critical uh, for helping to address human rights concerns in uh, Tibet. The current travel restrictions, as has been mentioned, keep Tibet isolated. They prevent journalists and others from assessing and exposing gross human rights violations in the region. The State Department Human Rights Report for China and Tibet is filled with examples of such violations, including torture, arbitrary arrest and imprisonment, religious and cultural restrictions against Tibetans. Uh, I have participated in many hearings uh, relative to Tibet and the human rights violations uh, going on there. And I think uh, I'm pleased that we're finally acting on this. It's been a long time coming, but today is a good day uh, to be moving forward. It's an important step uh, to protect the Tibetan people. I strongly support this bill, and I urge uh, my colleagues to do the same, and I yield back. Are there uh, any amendments to the amendment? A reporting quorum being present. The question is on the motion. Report the bill H.R. 1872 as amended favorably to the House. Those in favor will say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the bill is ordered reported favorably. Members will have two days to submit views, and without objection, the bill will be reported as a single amendment in the nature of a substitute incorporating all adopted amendments, and staff is authorized to make technical and conforming changes. This concludes our business for today. Thanks to all of our members for attending, and the markup is adjourned.